Hey there YouTube, JCM45 here, coming at you with yet another action figure review. And this time we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. This time we're going to be taking a look at a set of four Spider-Man retro Marvel Legends figures by Hasbro. Uh, these are all released separately. The two Spider-Man here on the left are Target exclusives, and the Black Cat and J. Jonah Jameson here are fan channel exclusives that you can get at Hasbro Pulse, GameStop, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, Dorkside Toys, all those. But they all released around the same time I got them within about a day of one another. And so I'm kind of considering this the unofficial second wave of Hasbro Marvel Legends retro Spider-Man figures. We got that first wave with the new Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy, Green Goblin, Peter Parker, Daredevil. We got that a couple months ago, Electro and um, now we have these guys and they're all on that same vintage style card back we'll take a quick look at each card before we open them up and then uh, we'll take a look so looking at Cyborg Spider-Man you have a quick look at his card here you have the little picture here on the side you've got a nice window for the figure you flip it over you got a nice little bio there same character card there on the top and you got the UPC and other nonsense there on the bottom. And this is consistent for the rest of the wave. You have your Negative Zone Spider-Man, or as I like to call him, Oreo Spider-Man. Same kind of deal. You have his character card and the window, as well as a little bio on the figure. Same with Black Cat, Felicia Hardy. This is a re-release or a slight redeco of the Black Cat figure that was released a couple years ago. She doesn't have her suit as open as much, showing off less cleavage, and she doesn't kind of have the fur collar going on. But she is more accurate to the animated series uh, that these figures are based off of, or at least the packaging invokes. And so there's the back of the packaging. And last but not least, we got J. Jonah Jameson. He's looking great as well. I think Hasbro did a really, really nice job with these retro cards. I've kept, I've, I don't usually keep Marvel Legends packaging, but I have kept a couple of these cards um, for Spider-Man and a couple others, and I just I think they did a really, really nice job. All right, so let's take a look at these guys, and we're going to start off with old Flat Top himself, J. Jonah Jameson. All right, and we have J. Jonah Jameson here out of his packaging, and he's looking pretty fantastic in my opinion. Uh, before we look at the figure, we'll take a quick look at the accessories. He does come with two gripping hands, as you can see here, and he also comes with a fist as well as a pointing hand, which we will take a look at when we look at the figure, those, what's on the figure. He also comes with a rolled-up Daily Bugle newspaper, the same one that we received with Gwen Stacy, which is pretty cool. And then he also came with this cardstock newspaper piece that says Spider-Man Menace, which is really cool. And I like how they use an actual f picture of the Marvel, the new Marvel Legends Retro Spidey. That's, that's pretty great. And you flip it over and you have some more text and whatnot on the back there. It's just, this was a nice touch, Hasbro. Very, very great addition there. Moving on to the figure, we have a quick look here. As you can see, it is a lot of reuse, but that's okay because they did a really good job. They used some great parts. The head sculpt here is the old head sculpt that was released in the with the Chameleon figure in the old Marvel Legends Infinite days. So that's great to get that out there. That was difficult to acquire nowadays. Moving on down, the shirt is the torso is the typical suited kind of uh, undershirt body there. We see that time and time again. The tie is new. It's a little messy red and black tie. That's pretty cool. The vest is also a new piece, I believe. That is a separate piece. You can take that off. And then the arms are from the uh, claw figure, the MCU claw figure we received a couple years ago. And then the entire lower half is the traditional suited body that we normally get. So uh, no surprises there. I think Hasbro did a really good job. I, the color choices, everything. I'm really, really happy with Jonah here. Okay, going over Jonah's articulation real quick. His 
head is on a ball and hinge. It can turn all the way around, as you can see there. He can look up quite a bit due to the flat kind of back there he's got on the back of his head. He can look down about that much. My hinge on, on mine is really, really tight for whatever reason, so it's a little hard to get him to look up and down, but that's fine. Moving on over to his shoulders, they can arc out about that much. They can rotate all the way around. He has a bicep swivel there. His, shoulder, his elbow is just a single jointed elbow, unfortunately, so you only get 90 degrees, which is kind of unfortunate. He does have an elbow swivel, though, because it is a single jointed elbow, so that's kind of neat. And then you have the traditional hinge and swivel system for his wrists here. And that's the same, and there's that fist I was talking about. And real quick, we'll look at his pointing hand, which is the same. Pretty great. Moving on down to over to the torso, he has a ab crunch. He can crunch forward about that far, which is not bad. And because of the vest here, he can only arc about that far. So it is what it is. I mean, you're not going to really get Jonah in a, a bunch of dynamic poses anyway, really. He does have a waist swivel. I can turn all the way around. He, his hips can kick up about that far. They can kick back. Not at all. <laughs> they, can, they can spread about that far. He does have a thigh swivel there. Double jointed knees get you all the way. He can kick back that far. And then a forward facing pin for rocker on a hinge that can go down that far and about up that far and then some pretty good rocking there. And so that's articulation for Jonah. And for size comparison, we have two figures from the previous retro Spider-Man wave. We have Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And I think they all look really good together. And here he is with the standard Marvel Legends Bucky Cat mold and a Black Series Stormtrooper. Okay, so next up we're going to break it up with a Spider-Man here. And we're going to take a look at Cyborg Spider-Man. As he appeared in his adjectiveless title, Spider-Man number 21 by Eric Larson, with Deathlock, the cyborg soldier. I wish I did have a Deathlock figure. I don't. I passed on it numerous times to pair with this guy, but I don't have it. Oh well. But before we look at the figure, we'll take a quick look at his accessories. He comes with a fisted hand, which is nice for his regular arm there, as well as a web line. That just curls up there at the end, and it's got a little spot for him to kind of loop onto it. We've seen this web numerous times with a couple other Spidey releases. So moving on <clears throat> to Spider-Man, Cyborg Spidey himself. This is mostly reuse from the Pizza Spider-Man mold that they've been re-releasing several times now. His various different Spideys, and it's still a pretty good body for what it is. I don't hate it. I know a lot of people are complaining, saying, you know, why didn't they use that retro Spidey mold? This one here that just came out a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago. And I don't know. I'm personally okay with it. It doesn't bother me too, too much. But uh, yeah, otherwise the figure looks really good. It's just kind of got your standard Spider-Man suit with some additional things. The head sculpt is new, I believe. Yeah, it is a completely new head sculpt with his bandage on the top and his cyborg eye. The arm itself is new, I want to say. I don't recognize any of these parts from anywhere. Maybe the fist could be Cyborg. Uh, cyborg. Excuse me, Colossus. And so, I'm not too sure about that. Moving on over to his belt. That is a pretty... I, I haven't seen this belt used anywhere else before, or if I have, I can't recall. And then this bandage here is a free-floating piece that will come loose and can come off, so be very careful not to lose that when messing around with him, but otherwise he's a pretty standard looking Spidey with some cyborg attachments. I really like the cyborg arm, they did a good job with the paint, and yeah, pretty happy with this guy. Looks good. So taking a quick look here at cyborg Spidey's articulation, his head is on a ball and hinge, it can turn around 360 degrees, he can look up about that far, he can look down that far, and yeah, and so moving on to his shoulders, he does have uh, butterfly joints on both arms. They can both go about in and out about that much. 
both arms can arc about that far, so not too far. This doesn't really hinder anything because it doesn't get that far anyway. Both arms have bicep swivels, double jointed elbows. The cyborg arm gets well past 90, whereas his, so does his other one here, his regular one, and both wrists are on the standard hinge and swivel for his flipping and his cyborg hand here. Moving on to his torso, he's got an ab crunch, which can crunch about that much. He can kick back about that much, that's fine. He's got a waist swivel, which is nice. The belt is a uh, floating piece, so that twists all around, that's great. Moving on to the hips, he can spread surprisingly far. They must have tweaked this mold a little bit because no other versions of Pizza Spidey can spread this far, and that's that was always an annoying thing about pe about that mold, but it seemed to have finally fixed it. We'll see what it looks like in the negative zone Spidey here in a little bit. But yeah, that's pretty nice. His hips can, or his legs can kick forward that far. His, they can't really kick back that far. That's fine. He's got a thigh swivel on both, and then double jointed knees go up about there. A boot, a boot cut there, which is nice. That's always great to have. And then your standard forward-facing pin with a for a rocker and a hinge that can go down that far and up about that far. So if you have any of the previous Pizza Spidey molds, you know what you're getting into. The only real change is they improved the spread on the And hips. since we've seen this mold a bunch of times in the past, we're just going to take a quick look at a... Marvel Legends Bucky Cat mold with Deadpool there and your standard Black Series Stormtrooper. So next up here we have Felicia Hardy, the Black Cat, Spider-Man's love interest from the 80s and one of the primary characters in the animated series from the 90s. Before we look at the figure, we'll of course look at her accessories. She comes with two different accessories. She comes with a Black Cat here. I believe this is reuse from the Captain, one of the Captain Marvel wave cats that we that they got, I can't even remember the thing's name, but yeah. You know, so there's a, we've seen this before, I believe, and it's just a black cat with yellow eyes. Those eyes are pretty, pretty ridiculous, but yeah, there you go. And then she also comes with her little claw whip here. It is a softer plastic, so it can kind of bend and move around. She's got a little cat claw here at the end and a little handle on this end, and this is the accessory she originally came with back, way back in the Marvel Legend Infinite Days. So next up is the figure. She's your pretty standard female body mold, uh, Moonstone body mold, I believe. She's looking pretty good there. She's just kind of a black female body mold with some additional uh, tufts of hair on her forearms and then just and on her shins here and just some white parts on the for her gloves. And then the face, the head sculpt, I believe, is not the same one we use. I can't recall where I've seen this head sculpt before. I have seen it somewhere. Can't remember where, but it does look very familiar. I do like this one a lot more than the first one uh, because it does look a lot like more like her in the animated series, and that's kind of what I see in my mind's eye. So, yeah, looking great. Going over articulation real quick, Cat's head is on a ball joint, and because of the hair, you really can't move it up and down. That's kind of unfortunate, and you can kind of move it side to side, but not really. Her arm will arc out about that far, which is pretty good. Not too bad there. Goes all the way around. She's got a single jointed elbow, and mine were super duper tight out of the out of the box. I was able to free this one up with some hot water, but unfortunately this one is still stuck and I can actually kind of feel the peg starting to flex. I know it's starting to tear as you can see it there, so I gotta be super delicate with that. I think I'm gonna contact Hasbro's customer support and see if they can swap, they can do something to swap me out with something just because this is, that sucks. I really am not a, not happy about that. That's a very unfortunate. But the arm doesn't really get much. It goes only about that far. It can kind of go back a little bit. And yeah, and it's got an elbow swivel there, but that's about it. The wrist is, the, once again, the standard hinge and swivel system, but this one goes up and down, actually. 
So that's pretty nice to have an up and down there. And then this one is, I can't even tell. Is this on the hinge? I can't even see. Whatever. Anyway, her torso is on a ball joint here. It can twist around. It can arc down about that much. It can arc back about that much, so not bad there. She can kick out about that far. That's not bad. She can kick back about that far. She can do about that spread there. She has a thigh swivel, double jointed knees. No boot cut and forward facing pin for rocker and then the hinge that can go down that far and that far up. And the main difference between this other than the deco with the collar and then the way the costume is opened, the boots on the original one had high heels. These are flat and she's a lot easier to stand. So yeah, not too bad. Real quick, here's a size comparison with the retro Spider-Man mold and the recently released retro Peter Parker. And then because we always have to do it, standard Marvel Legends Bucky Cap Deadpool and then the Black Series Stormtrooper. All right, and last but not least, we have Negative Zone Spider-Man. And to start off, we will once again look at the accessories first. Out of the box, he's got two fists on his hands there. Comes with two black thwipping hands. Nothing really special, they're just plain black there. And then he's got two flat wall crawling hands. Same kind of deal, they're just kind of black there. And then he's got this interesting negative zone slice of pizza because he is once again the pizza spidey mold. But this pizza slice is pretty cool because it looks, it's a negative zone pizza slice or an Oreo pizza slice, whatever you want to call it. It's an interesting looking, interesting accessory to include. And so like I mentioned, this is once again the pizza spidey mold. So we've seen this a dozen times. I really won't be going over articulation on this guy. I already did it on the cyborg Spider-Man over there. So it is what it is. I will note that they didn't they did not get the hip spread right on here and he doesn't have the boot cuts like the other one does. So they are using the older style here. This is straight up reuse of the mold. And this mold is starting to get a little degraded, I feel like, because it's like getting a little bit harder to kind of move things around on it. So they need to kind of maybe retire this guy. Um, but aesthetics on the figure, it is just kind of a black and white Spider-Man. As you can see there, he's got a white spider there punched in at the front. His head's looking good there with the white eye outlines, the black center there, flipping him around. Where the blue would be normally be, it's white. You got the black spider there on the back. And it's just pretty consistent throughout the figure. So, I mean, it looks pretty good. I kind of wish they would have done a web print on there. I'm su surprised they didn't, but it is what it is, I guess. So, yeah, that is Negatives on Spidey. And as usual, we will do our normal size comparison here. We've got Bucky Cap Deadpool, Black Series Stormtrooper. Okay, so my final thoughts on these guys are, unfortunately, we got a lot of reuse out of this wave. Uh, the two Spider-Mans are basically both entirely Pizza Spidey reuse, which is a shame. I really wish we they would have used the new one, the new Retro Spidey, like everyone was saying online, but I guess it is what it is. The Moonstone body for Black Cat is feeling pretty antiquated though, and it's great to have her in the collection since I missed out on her the first time around, but I really, really wish they did a new, they updated the body mold on her a bit because she is pretty limited in what she can do. And then that's not even talking to go about the elbow, the stuck elbow that I'm having issues with that I just can't get unstuck no matter what I do. So, probably going to contact Hasbro customer support about her. Maybe see if I can get it swapped out. We'll see. Who knows. But the real standout here is Jonah. He's great. He looks the best, in my opinion. He's just super expressive. He has great ex great accessories. Just a really fun figure. I'm glad to have him. He looks great with the civilian figures and whatnot. Um, so, yeah. I got Black Cat and Jonah from Hasbro Pulse. 
They were supposed to come out in January, but I got a shipping notice for them randomly last week, so pretty cool. Wasn't expecting that. And then I got the two Spider-Men over at my local Target during their buy two, get one free deal that they had going on, which was pretty neat. So, yeah, so I know this isn't an official wave, this is not an official wave two, but I'm going to call it the Marvel Legends Spider-Man Retro Wave 2. So, that's how I feel about them. You may agree or disagree, is what it is. So like, comment, subscribe, do what you guys do, and I will see you next time.